taken as the last straw. In that article, I make a comparison between the things young people complained about before the revolution and the things young people were complaining about 30 years later. For example, I mentioned the story of the peasants who didn't have land before the revolution, or the high rate of illiteracy that used to exist, or the fact that young black people were discriminated, that the young workers didn't have jobs, and so on. Basically, a long list of negative things that existed in Cuba during the dictatorship of Batista, before the revolution. Then, I said that, 30 years later, young people were asking for more freedoms, and I said that was because, throughout history, in every corner of the planet, young people have always wanted more freedoms. Reynaldo was told by the authorities that he wasn't suitable to write for a Cuban newspaper, as his views diverged from the line of the Communist Party. He was banned from working as a journalist in Cuba. That's the reason why I started other kinds of work. I first worked as a librarian and then as a mechanic, fixing lifts, until I stopped working for the government and went for a more alternative job as a Spanish teacher. Now Reynaldo has his own internet blog on the same website where Joanny writes. The May issue of Time magazine named Joanny in the list of the world's 100 most influential people of 2008. The magazine noted that Joanny Sanchez has practiced what paper-bound journalists in her country cannot, freedom of speech. I think I'm the least known person in that hundred list, and that makes me happy. To know that a person like me, whose only purpose was to tell her reality and to post her daily life and her feelings on a blog, can be there with all those famous people. Spanish newspaper El País then gave Joanny the Ortega Gazeta Award for digital journalism. But due to travel restrictions, Joanny couldn't fly to Spain to receive her award. This book is called Fidel, Bolivia and Something More. It was reissued a few days ago. In the prologue, Fidel Castro makes a reference to me, not with my name and surname, but talks about a young Cuban girl who asked for permission to travel to Spain to receive one of those awards promoted by imperialism in order to fulfill its purposes. Here it is. These are the quotes he wrote. He is worried that there are young Cubans who think in that way and who have been specially sent to carry out spy work. I took this as an insult, but I didn't want to reply, so instead I ironically wrote on my blog that it will be my husband, journalist Reynaldo Escobar, who will reply to the discrediting comments he wrote in his book. I replied explaining that there is a greater responsibility when you give an award. The gentleman who wrote that prologue had given medals and awards to infamous figures, such as Lionel Brezhnev, Nicolas Ceausescu, Heng Samrin, Pol Pot's comrade in Cambodia, Robert Mugabe, anyway, a long list of the International Club of Monsters. The frenzy for information that is growing among young Cubans brought about the dissemination of thousands of memory sticks and CDs with the video of a debate between a class of IT students and Ricardo Alarcón, the president of Cuba's National Assembly. Why can't the Cuban people, and by this I mean the workers and their families, have the possibility to go into Cuban hotels or travel to other places around the world? I, for example, don't want to die without visiting the ground where Che Guevara fell in Bolivia. I also agree that we should all be able to travel as much as possible. I wish all Cubans could travel and get to know the outside world. I believe this would mean the end of the ideological battle in this country, when people are able to properly see how life is in the real world, to see how other people live. And this, I can guarantee you, is something that worries all 10,000 students in this university. What is going on with the internet services? The two most used services in the world, which are Google and Yahoo, were suddenly cut off and we are forbidden to use them in any of the country's institutions.
Those things you said about the internet, to be really honest, I haven't got an answer because I wasn't aware of that. The video was later leaked to Western broadcasters, and there were even reports that said the students seen in the video had been arrested. These reports proved to be completely false. Some of the worries expressed by the students back in February have now eased. Since April, Cubans are allowed to stay in tourist hotels, as well as to buy mobile phones and computers. For many, these changes, although small, represent the hope for greater reforms to come. After the break, regime change and real change in Cuba.